Welcome to the OWS-8 Observation Fusion Earth Observation Coverages subthread. In this portion of the demonstration, you will see how satellite imagery information is made interoperable and used in a real-world analysis exercise. The OGC's web coverage service has been the primary standard for serving satellite imagery over the web for many years. However, the Earth observation community saw a need to specialize the service to make it fit their needs more distinctly. This has led to the development of the Earth Observation Profile of the Web Coverage Service, or EOWCS for short. We'll review the goals for serving imagery via EOWCS and the, and the engineering reports you can download and read for more detailed information on the project. Then we'll describe the analysis exercise and see how it was deployed in prototype systems by OWSA participants and applied to an actual data processing experiment NASA scientists have undertaken in the past. The goals of the project were to make the existing OGC web coverage service better for Earth observation scientists. This meant developing a new profile of web coverage service, the Earth Observation Web Coverage Service. We developed the standard, built a number of software implementations, developed compliance tests for EOWCS, and tested the now compliant implementations with imagery viewing clients and imagery processing services. There are four engineering reports available for download next month where you can study the work in greater detail. Satellite data can go through two stages of analysis. First, pre-processing occurs to filter out things like cloud cover, correct for aerosol corruption effects, and to remove residual atmosphere corruption to produce the best possible signals from the imagery. In OWS-8, participants took data from NASA and ESA and applied these pre-processing steps before serving the imagery via EOWCS. This allowed the imagery to be available in a very flexible manner, including the capability to mosaic, reproject, and warp adjacent satellite images to match the coordinate reference systems of other datasets. Only then can any actual analysis occur. And in a moment, you will see mathematical functions applied to the imagery to study drought, identifying the change in precipitation and greenness over time. Analysis was performed in desktop software and in a web processing service and a web coverage processing service. Thanks to all our participants for a year of intense hard work, and a special thanks to our sponsors, two of the world's premier satellite imagery providers, NASA, the United States National Aeronautics and Space Administration, and ESA, the European Space Agency. To test the EOWCS in a real-world scenario, we replicated an Amazon River drought study that actual NASA scientists performed in 2005 and 2010. Rainforests in the Amazon region of South America hold a large amount of the world's carbon reserves. There is concern that in a warming climate, the ensuing moisture stress could result in these rainforests being replaced by savannas, which would release that carbon to the atmosphere, accelerating global warming significantly. Hence, the drought sensitivity of the Amazon region is a subject of intense study. On the heels of the once-in-a-century drought in 2005 comes an even more severe drought in 2010, which also was intense and coincided with the dry season. Direct evidence of the impact in terms of the spatial extent and severity of the 2010 drought on Amazonian vegetation is currently lacking. Hence, NASA is interested in developing methods to automate drought analysis using commonly available satellite datasets of precipitation and vegetation greenness. Furthermore, NASA's interest in the OGC Web Coverage Service protocol reflects the desire to make data characteristics such as granularity, projection, and formats more transparent in order to accommodate diverse communities wishing to fully exploit NASA's vast data archives for new applications that require data transformations. <laughs>